Question 8 then from the 2017 Mathematics and Mechanics. Six marks this time. Here we go, motion and incline again. It's like number one. There's the two particles. Mass is 0.2 and 0.5 kilograms. The slope's at 30. They're both travelling up the slope just now. X is going faster at 6. Y is going at 3. When they collide, which happens, it says 3.5 metres from B. When it happens, X comes to a stop, so Y then shoots off. But it'll get slowed down as it's travelling up, so it'll eventually come to a stop. And the question is, will it reach B before it stops? Well, that's like question one. Question one, you had a skier starting at rest, coming down a certain distance, and you had to get the velocity. Here you've got Y travelling up from a certain velocity until it gets to zero, and the question is, what's the distance? Will it make 3.5? So it's in the two parts. The first part, obviously, will be momentum question, because you don't know what the speed of v Y is. So, momentum. What are you going to put for momentum? Various texts, places, use different letters for that. I've seen P, you could strike the word momentum. G is another word, that, letter that's also used for momentum. So I'll go GI standing for the initial momentum. What is the initial momentum? It'll be for X, it's 0.2 times 6. And for Y, it's 0.5 times 3. So that's going to be 1.2 plus 1.5, which is 2.7 Newton seconds. What about the final momentum? Well, it said X is brought to a rest. So it'll be 0 0.2 times 0. And then Y carries on at a certain speed, so I'll just put V. So it means the final momentum is 0 0.5 V units, newton seconds. Now, so far, there's a mark here. Not quite a mark here, there's a mark once you say, well, GI equals GF, or the other way around, GF equals GI, which means 0.5V will equal 2.7, so V will be that divided by 0.5, well, that's just double it then, isn't it? 5.4 metres per second. Well, that wasn't too bad for the three marks. One for the initial momentum, one for the final momentum and equating them, and one for the answer. But now you've got two ways of working out how far it goes. You can use the equations of motion, or you can use work energy. Or it's just conservation energy here, because there'll be no work done against friction. The advantage of the energy method is, you don't have to work out forces and acceleration, in this case. Equations of motion, I'll have to work out the forces, because I'll need to know the acceleration. So if I do it that way first, the only force that's involved here is the weight of Y. Just call it Mg. One component acts into the plane. The other one acts down the plane. So if that's the plane at 30, complement, that's back to 30 there. So this part here is going to be Mg sine 30. I'll just put it down. Some of the forces parallel to the plane, because I'm not interested in anything that's happening perpendicular to it. I may as well put my sense in. The direction of motion is upwards, so I'll use that as the positive for the parallel. Well, if that's the case, the only thing that's happening is you've got the component of the weight. It's acting down, so that's going to be minus. Minus mg sine 30. I know, I know, oops, there it's there. I know what the weight is, but the thing is, this is unbalanced, so that will result in an acceleration. So that unbalanced force there will be the mass times the acceleration. Stating that gets a mark. So the M's will cancel out and you'll just have this. That means that A will be, well you know sine 30 is a half, so it's just a half of G. You could just jump in and I'll put it down. So that's going to be a half times 9.8, negative of course, which means the acceleration is going to be negative 4.9 metres per second squared. Now, how far will it go? So, which one of the Stuva equations will you use? Well, you know its initial velocity, you know the acceleration, you know the final velocity, and you know the distance you want to travel, so that the one you're going to be using is going to be this one then. You'll be using v squared is u squared 
plus 2as. Well, of course, I want to work out s. And in this case, because that is not the same as that one, you've got 0 equals 5.4 squared is minus, so it'll be minus 2 times it. Oh, that just bumps it back up to 9.8 times the distance. That gets a mark, because you're only a wee bit away from the answer now. Not the room here, yes I have. So S equals, taking that over, 5.4 squared, of course that goes as positive. Take that across and divide, divided by 9.8, which when you press the buttons gives you 2.975 and so on metres. So that means that's 2.98 metres, but the question didn't say how far it will travel, it said, will it reach B? So you have to make a final conclusion. So that alone isn't the final mark, then you have to say something like this. Y will not reach B as it will only travel 2.98 metres, which is less than the 3.5 metres needed for B. Or you could put something else. It will not reach B as it will be, then you could say how much short it is. Because that's 2 centimetres, that's 52 centimetres short. Final mark. Or you could use the conservation of energy, because there's no work done against friction in this case. And say this, well, E1 is going to be made up of the two parts. For Y, that's going to be the potential energy and the kinetic energy. Now, taking that point as the datum, that will be zero. The kinetic energy will be a half of mv squared, so that's a half of 0 0.5 times 5.4 squared. You could carry all that through. Maybe I'll just work it out. So that's 7.29 joules. E2. In other words, when it comes to a stop, I'll put the two parts in again. Well, it comes to a stop, so that part will be zero, and this part will be mgh, not 0.5g times h. So that's going to be the 4.9h joules. And then, same as the first part, but it's quite parallel with the first part, since, maybe we'll do it this way, e2 equals e1, that means that 4.9h equals 7.29, so h will be 7.29 divided by 4.9, which is 1.4877 and so on metres. Well, the problem is that's not the distance up the slope, that's the vertical distance. So that means I'm just going to have to work out what the distance up the slope is just by using trigonometry. So if that was h, you know, from the triangle, that's 30. That's the distance, that's h. S is going to be h divided by sine 30. S is going to be 1.4877 and so on, divided by, and sine 30 is a half. So you double that, and you get the same thing, 2.9755 and so on. So 2.98 metres. And then you make the same conclusion. It's not got this in the marking scheme, so I'm just guessing there'll be one mark for getting the energies, one mark for equating them and getting the height, and then finally one mark for getting the distance and making the comment. No, it won't reach it because it's less than 3.5 because it's 52 centimetres short.